Hi guys, this is Jeannie Travanich from Kara Tutoring and today I'm going to show you the ultimate SAT essay guide for um, beginners, intermediate, whatever. So the essay is often said that it is not needed, but a lot of schools still say that they highly recommend the essay and the UC schools, University of California schools such as UC Berkeley or LA still require the essay. So you need to make sure that you ace this essay if you're given the opportunity to take it. So understanding the prompt is really important because you can know what you're actually looking for in the uh, article as you read it and you don't have to waste so much time thinking about like rereading re the article to see what you actually need to look for. Does that make sense? You want to be efficient and spend the, less, the least time possible. All right, so let's look at this prompt. This is at the very end of the article once you get to it, okay? So explain how Paul Bogard builds an argument to persuade his audience that natural darkness should be pres preserved. Okay, so this is what he's doing. He's persuading the audience that natural darkness should be preserved. In your essay, analyze how Bogard uses blah, 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 blah. So it's basically saying how he uses evidence and all that stuff to um, back up his claim in order to pres uh, to persuade the audience. So the main thing you need to be doing in these essays is showing how it affects readers this is important how it affects readers that is what you want to be looking for okay so the evidence to use so basically what you should be looking for as you read come in several things you can use anything you want but these are the most basic and most um, also very complex things that you can use in order to write a good essay on how the author uses these things to persuade the audience. So first thing, appeals. We have appeal to emotion, logic, and ethicality. Ethicality is just like honestness, like how true is this information that you're giving us? Are these statistics real? All of that. These are the things that people mostly use in order to fight for their argument. So the main thing you should be focusing on basically in all the evidence that you find is how it affects the reader. This is very important. You want to step into the reader's shoes, well, you, which you are, but you want to make sure that you're representing the entire audience. You are speak, you are representing the reader in this essay. So you are showing how impactful the author is. Calculated specific target. Now this is not a very um, easy thing to find sometimes, but it is something that does happen in articles. So sometimes articles... In the big well, all, all the time in the beginning of the article, it shows the article name, the author, and when it was written. So, like, let's say like 2001. Okay, so for example, there was this essay that I read, or not this essay, but this article that I read a while ago talking about like climate change and how to be environmentally friendly, all of that. Okay, and this essay was or this article was written sometime in the last decade. Uh, last few decades and these are in the last few decades climate change being environmentally friendly knowing preserving nature and accepting nature was a real is has been a very big argument and um, debate among very, a lot of people so it is still a top problem that we have in politics or all around the world and it is something that most people out of all are very or not very, but like they are knowledgeable about them. They they know what climate change is. They know what people are saying and they know the effects of it probably, maybe, maybe not. Anyways, the specific target that comes with um, these articles um, may be the modern audience of the people that we have today. Let's say the author is probably a middle-aged or old man. He could have talked, to this, talked about this a long, long time ago if he still believed in it, but instead he chooses to talk about it um, in this in the last two decades just because he wants to make sure that this message is given to people that believe in being environmentally friendly or know about the or although they might not believe but they know about the environmental effects of blah blah and blah so this is a very strong argument for something that you that is not very obviously seen in a lot of articles and you can use it Finally, we have these things. These are personal applications such as anecdotes, stories, call to action, or whatever. And so in these things, um, you can use these things because the readers, a lot of times when they see personal applications, they can 
be they can integrate themselves into the author's um, shoes. So when they when this happens, the author is more likely to persuade the reader in a more positive and um, effective way because the reader is seeing everything from the author's point of view, and that is exactly what the author wants. And it is a technique that is often used by many writers in the articles. All right. So here's some practice. And so we can already see that Paul Bogard uses ethos or the, um, don't say ethos in your essay. I forgot to mention that earlier. Maybe I didn't. But don't say the words itself. They don't want to see that. They want to see appeal. Appeals to whatever. Okay, it makes more sense. It's more descriptive. It's more, um, it's more effective when argu arguing for something. So he uses the World Health Organization and the AMA, which are both organizations that are highly respected and well-known just for the effect of showing that his information is true, or although true comes from a credible source, okay? And so when it comes from a credible source, readers are more likely to believe it, more likely to listen to it, and therefore are more likely to be persuaded. And this is um, because readers are po probably going to be um, very or somewhat educated in the fact that they know what these organizations are blah 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 you want to include how the reader feels when they read this information you want to include how the reader knows this information what the information does to the reader in your analysis of the specific evidence used so it talks about this this is the evidence that's given and then um, basically this is just oh another thing Probable human carcinogen talks about which keeps certain cancers. So it's saying that light, too much light at night, bad, because <laughs> it can cause cancer. And we as humans are most likely going to go against cancer. We don't, we, most of us, if we're normal, do not want to die early because of cancer, which is very painful and bad and hurts our mentality and physical bodies. And that's just not very good. So you can say, in, with this evidence, you can say, well, the Paul Bogard uses these words such as human carcinogen, cancers. It, it reaches out to the reader's appeal to emotion. They are scared. They do not want to die. They are fearful, fearful for their lives. Therefore, they are more likely to step into the realm of accepting the fact that light, artificial light at night is not good for you. And that is how the reader feels. Once again, you want to include how the reader feels when they see this type of evidence. That is the main point of your essay. Okay, the structure of the essay is also very important because you want to have a very smooth and um, confident tone in your essay that shows that you know what you're talking about and that really makes sense to the readers, whoever the readers are, whether they be college word or whatever. So structure, the main, the basic structure of any essay, here, why well, just the main structure of any argumentative essay is usually going to be the five paragraph structure where you have a short intro you have body paragraph one two three and then you have you don't need um you don't need a conclusion but if you do have time it's sometimes nice to be in there but it's not in the outline of the grading system for a college board or anything so you really don't need a conclusion so let's start off with introduction introduction short summary here, why don't I write that down? Short summary. We have short summary and then we have our thesis. And then our thesis should be Bogard utilize or whatever the author's name is, utilizes this, this, and this, or whatever you want to use. How many you want to use? One or three. I recommend three. Three. Two, three. That is pretty good. In order to effectively and then this part is going to be literally the same as the um, prompt where it says persuade his audience that natural darkness, blah, blah, blah. You can literally copy that or you can put it in your own words, but you could copy it if you want to be more efficient. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that is your thesis. The short summary, just talk about what he does. He, what did characterize, he um, classifies, argues, um, analyzes, all of that is fine. So these three are your main body paragraphs. They consist of your evidence that Paul, Paul Bogard uses to, in order to persuade his audience. So I suggest that these should be ranked in 
um, in order of importance where this is the least important and this is the most important and this should be used to be that one thing that really helps the reader step in step over the line of being persuaded by Paul Bogard being persuaded by the author and really believing in what he's saying this is should be the most important one and most likely this one you should use something that isn't obviously seen in the essay at first glance it should be something that is somewhat thoughtful, something that came from Bogard as he was writing it in order to really effectively persuade his audience. You want to make sure that this is important. This is the part that most readers of the, the essay, the graders, are most impressed with, and it's something you should really pay attention to. In the conclusion, if you want to have one, if you have time to have one, just restate your thesis, and then you can have a concluding statement if you want. And that is it for today. I hope this quick guide helps you with um, setting up for the essay for the SAT. And I hope you guys do really well on that. Check out our other videos that we have on our page. You can see um, a lot of helpful things for the math and English section. And I hope you guys come back. And uh, just as a reminder, if you would like to be a student for Kara Tutoring, please click the link below in the description in order to learn more about Kara Tutoring and apply.